thought I'd wasted my money on Lunar Display, but after setting it up and working out its quirks, it actually completely changed my setup. What's going on YouTube? I'm going to talk to you today about the problems I had with setting up my new Mac Studio with the Lunar Display. I couldn't seem to get it out of peer-to-peer -peer mode and the quality in the videos and the stutteriness of the display was just unworkable. I thought at that point, oh God, you've wasted your money on this. You've bought another little device that is just a gimmick that doesn't work and you're still going to have to pay like 500, 600 pounds and you're going to have to buy a new screen for this computer that you've already just spent quite a lot of money on. So to say I was underwhelmed by Lunar Display at first would be an understatement. That being said, after I tweaked it and I had a little play around with the settings, I actually managed to get it hooked up over the Ethernet and that made a huge difference to the performance but it still wasn't without its quirks so in this video i will go over how i fix these problems and i'll also let you know some of the things that i do love about lunar display and then some of the things that I don't quite love about Lunar Display. So that being said, come on, let's get into it. So setting up Lunar Display, it was a lot of trial and error. There was, there was a lot of turning the Mac on, turning it off again, turning the iMac on, turning that off again, plugging the wire in, unplugging the wire, trying all these new combinations because what I was reading online, it should have worked. I'd set up the IP address on the Mac and on the iMac. I'd put the submit mask to the same address. Yet for some reason, it wasn't working. But after multiple tries, I somehow managed to get it working. So because I'd already set up the IP address, for what it was supposed to be, the standard IP address with just the last number at the end changed and the subnet mask being the same, it still wasn't working and that, that should have been what sorted it out. So what I actually had to do was then delete the whole connection and I thought, hang on, what am I doing here? Am I getting rid of the ethernet capabilities? But actually you can very easily reapply it just by pressing the plus button and you can add a new ethernet connection and you can name it and you can put in all your IP address and subnet masks again. So that's what I did. I deleted it, I reapplied it, I put the wires back in and it worked. It miraculously decided that it was going to connect over ethernet. That's when I started to have a much more superior experience with this product. So what I love about it now is I've got all this screen real estate and I don't need to get rid of my 2017 iMac with that lovely 5K screen. Video playback and video editing is practically seamless. You can watch videos and you can edit with no lack of quality there. Whereas over the, the Wi-Fi, it, it was un unworkable in my opinion. Now I can actually access all the files from the iMac. So I haven't got to worry about migration or anything like that. And that's got a terabyte hard drive on it. So I still get to keep the terabyte hard drive from there. All the connectivity at the back. So there's four USBs and USB-Cs, the new Thunderbolts, Ethernet, obviously. On the back of the iMac, plus the hard drive and the RAM and, and, and the display and everything in there. And I can just access the files from the Mac Studio, which is great because all my university works on there. I, I don't have to worry about putting things in the cloud and using up storage and all that kind of thing. So that's been really good. I, I don't see it now as an upgrade. It's more of an expansion and it all appears on a network, which, which is great. I've never had that before. And I've basically got two terabytes now because there's a terabyte on the Mac Studio as well. I also love the fact that the keyboard and the mouse, you can share them between the two computers. Now, I think because I've got the MX Master, um, you would need a Bluetooth mouse that can basically you press a button underneath and it'll switch from the studio to the 2017. But because of the way Apple's set up, you share the mouse and keyboard anyway between Macs that are close by to each other. So you don't actually have to change it except in certain situations, which I shall let you know about shortly. And to, to wake the Mac up, the, the iMac, you just press the button on the back and it wakes up and you move the mouse across from the, the Thunderbolt display and you type in your password. It's, it's, it's you know, it's that simple. And, and to be honest, I actually think that these older Macs, the 5K Retina displays, they're gonna go up in price when people start realizing that you can get Lunar Display and you can get that power from the new Macs and still keep your screen. I think they're going to go up in value because I've seen them on eBay for like 500 quid. You're not going to get a hard drive, a computer, a Mac. You're not going to get all the hardware that you get in there 
and a 5k screen for that kind of money you just you're just not so I, I really would not be surprised to see the value of those increasing over time as it becomes more apparent that you can actually keep that screen there was another issue actually i'd lost 200 words so it, it didn't turn back on i had to fire up the 2017 to start doing my work again but by that point it was getting late and i was getting tired i was ready for bed i thought great i've spent all this money on this computer and uh, the bloody display doesn't work but it was okay because i could continue working on my old mac uh, it you've got a new computer it's a backup it's great so what i don't like about it like i said the display cable well that's a different story for a different video what i don't love about it is to be fair uh, now that it's all set up there's not really a lot I can say about it in that category I do wish it was a little bit easier to more straightforward to set up straight out of the box plug it in and away it goes no messing around with the network connections but that's a small price to pay for being able to keep the screen and in fact having two screens now like I mentioned it's got its quirks I've got the MX Master Mouse and I think that's probably a great solution to people to have a mouse that you can switch between machines but the touch of a button because I, I think that's proved to be a really useful workaround for some of the quirks on here. Sometimes just out of the blue the keyboard will stop working and the only way to start it up again is if you switch over to the Bluetooth of the iMac so you can still control the mouse it's just connected to the iMac only sometimes the cursor will just disappear totally randomly but the keyboard's working again. So then you switch it back to the Mac Studio, the cursor appears, and miraculously the keyboard's working again. So, I don't know, if any of you are experiencing any problems like this, let me know in the comments. Or if you were experiencing anything else, that, that any other weird quirks, let me know what you're experiencing, because mine could be different to yours. Also, if you leave the Mac for any period of time, it goes into sleep mode, which is standard, but you'll go away. One screen's gone off, and the other screen is just saying waiting to pair for a lunar display which is you know totally normal behavior when you turn it back on sometimes it'll crash and also almost all the time when you turn it back on it'll always revert to the peer-to-peer -peer over the wi-fi so it's a very simple solution you just shut down lunar display on both machines boot it up again and then bang you're back on the ethernet connection with with the good display but yeah like i said these these quirks they're a small price to pay really if you consider the price of the dongle was like 60 quid the new mac studio is going to be 1500 odd quid let's be honest you can work around them but rather than shelling out for a brand new mac studio display which don't get me wrong i would love one but i'm not in the stage of the game at the moment to be shelling out that kind of money on a display especially when i've got this thunderbolt display here which i bought off ebay and i am going to do another video on that so i'll link at the end for that for you but who's this actually for then lunar display in my opinion Obviously, the, the main people this is going to be for is for people who have got the 5K Retina iMac screens because there's going to be a lot of people out there and those machines were lovely. Apple made a good product there and you wouldn't want to get rid of it and I don't blame you, yet you're going to want to experience the new Mac Silicone because you don't want to be left behind on the old Intel processors. And like I say, now that I've got the Mac Studio and I've got it all up and running seamlessly with two old displays it's fantastic and it, it's all that power it's got the gpu processors to power these machines and it's absolutely seamless once it all starts working you can use it on the ipad as well but i'm yet to do that so if anyone has done that let me know what your thoughts are if it's any good but anyway so that's been this video i hope it's been of some use to you if it has press the like button if you've enjoyed it i've enjoyed making this content and i'm going to be making more and i'm just learning youtube as i go along with the aim of trying to get better each time i do a video if you want to see any more from me see how the channel grows please subscribe and i'll keep making these videos and yeah i'll post a video on the old new thunderbolt display that i bought off ebay thanks very much for watching peace out